Don't move. Tragedians. <laughs> At your command. Tragedians, what exactly do you do? Tragedy, sir. Deaths and disclosures, universal and particular. Denouement. Friends, the spread melodrama. I think we'd be fools not to look at it. <laughs> I think one of us is a fool now. Murder. On the air, mass gunmen storming a satirical magazine there. Eleven people killed so far. Gunmen still on the... And battle. People were killed in, in that blast, but we know ten members of one family. Also, two media centers uh, built... Whoa! Heroes! Thank you! Villains! No! 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 Flagrante delicto! At a price for which there are special terms. It costs little to watch and little more to get caught up in the action, if that's your taste, and times being what they are. What are they? Indifferent. Bad. Wicked. A lucky thing we came along. For us. Also for you. For some, it is performance. For others, patronage. They are two sides of the same coin, or being as there are so many of us, the same side of two coins. You said caught up in the action. <laughs> I did. A child's happiness is priceless, especially on a birthday. A child's happiness is priceless, especially on a birthday. A child's happiness is priceless, especially on a birthday. A child's happiness is priceless, especially on a birthday. Well, a child's happiness is priceless, right? Especially when you got a birthday. A child's happiness is priceless, especially on a birthday. A child's happiness is priceless, especially on a birthday. A child's happiness is priceless, especially on a birthday. You like that? The child's happiness is priceless, especially on a birthday. In consumer news, economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny step this year. Economic factors may take some spring Excuse out me. of the Easter Bunny. You're not exclusively players, then. We are inclusively players, sir. What exactly do you do? We keep to our usual stuff, more or less, only inside out. We do on stage the things that are supposed to happen off which is a kind of integrity if you look on every exit as an entrance somewhere else. We heard today from the 15-year-old who was the only survivor of a shooting this week near Houston that killed her mom and dad and her four siblings. I'm feeling a lot better and I'm on a very straightforward path to a full recovery. I really like Harry Potter. Um, in The Prisoner of Azkaban, Dumbledore says, happiness can be found even in the darkest of times. 15-year-old Cassidy Stay suffered a skull fracture and lost part of a finger. She is the sole survivor after her ex-uncle broke into her family's home and killed both of her parents and all four of her siblings. More than $220,000 has been raised on the internet for Cassidy. two sides of the same coin, or being as there are so many of us, the same side of two coins. It lies in the brave students that survived that day. Last Friday morning, Gene Rosen discovered a group of students in his driveway near the Sandy Hook Elementary School. And it started this way. 
this voice said, we can't go back. We can't go back to the school. We can't go back. We don't have a teacher. We can't go back to the school. We can't, we can't go back to the school because our teacher is gone. I can't go back to the school. We can't go back to the school. We can't go back to the school. We don't have a teacher. We don't have a teacher. We can't go back to the school. We can't go back to the school. Our teacher's gone. Our teacher's gone. We can't go back to school. We can't go back to school. Our teacher's dead. Mrs. Soto, we don't have a teacher. I can't go back to the school. I can't go back to the school. I don't have a teacher. I don't have a teacher. And then the other boy said, Mrs. Soto, my teacher's been shot. Mrs. Soto, my teacher's been shot. <laughs> Universal and particular. I spoke with Robbie and Alyssa Parker. Their daughter, six-year-old Emily Parker, was killed at Sandy Hook Elementary. Robbie, as you may remember, was one of the first family members to speak out. He gave an emotional news conference within a day of the shooting. So my name's Robbie Parker. My family is one of the families that lost a child yesterday in the Sandy Hook Elementary School shootings here in Connecticut. Tragedians! now on the growing conspiracy theories about the shootings at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut. If you don't know about this, you are going to be stunned. We were in Newtown last night and a number of residents have been inundated with hateful messages, crank calls by people who believe they are part of a government and media conspiracy surrounding the shootings. Now, it's not just some internet extremists alleging these conspiracies. This is a guy named James Tracy, a tenured associate professor at Florida Atlantic University. Professor Tracy claims the shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary did not happen as reported and may not have happened at all. Here's what he wrote originally. One is left to inquire whether the Sandy Hook shooting ever took place, at least in the way law enforcement authorities and the nation's news media have described. So about that, Tracy makes the case, if you want to call it a case, that news organizations and the government may have worked together to dupe you, the public, in order to gain support for gun control laws. He even suggests that the government may have hired trained crisis actors to aid in this ruse. In a statement earlier today, Emily's father, Robbie, told us, quote, as a country, we cannot let ourselves become derailed by the preposterous claims that are being made by a tiny number of people. We cannot let these false claims distract us from the things that matter most to all of us. Now, as I mentioned, Tracy isn't the only one claiming Sandy Hook might have been staged. Others say the family of Emily Parker, who passionately spoke about his daughter, this man, who spoke about his daughter, you may remember he came out, spoke to reporters about his daughter who had been killed, you probably watched this speech. Well, a lot of people say he was an actor pretending to be a grieving father. In fact, the family of Emily Parker has had to take down Emily's online memorial page because they've come under attack in the comments section on the site by these conspiracy theorists. It didn't have to be obscene. I was prepared. Uh, but it's this, is it? And but the emotion that you feel when you watch that story and you feel that story and you feel all the stories that we've all been going through for the past 72 hours relate directly to what we're going to talk to our next guest about. Dr. Mark Siegel is here. He's, he's part no of enigma, medical no dignity, nothing classical and... or poetic. Only this. A comic pornographer and a rabble of prostitutes. Too much fun there, and I don't want to miss anything. She would skip to get on the bus. It wasn't even a, you know, every morning it was the backpack was packed the night before and ready to get on the bus in the morning and head off to school. We were, we're going to go on and we're going to 
use her positive energy um, to help guide us forward. One of Gracie's favorite things to paint or draw was a peace sign. We went to the, the funeral home and we were telling the story of um, she, had a, she has a white casket. She does. And uh, when we walked in the room, it was the first time we were, had been able to be with her. And when we walked in the room and we saw that white casket, it just, you felt like the floor was falling out beneath you and your breath was taken away. But earlier in the morning, I decided, because Grace loved art so much, we were packing Sharpies in our pockets. And when we got in... Um, Forget McDonald's or they're amazing, Grace. You heard Lynn talk about giving President Obama one of Gracie's pictures. She, she gave me the, the same picture, a Xerox copy of it. This is an owl that, that Grace had drawn. And President Obama said that he would cherish it, and I'm certainly going to frame this and cherish it as well. 27-year-old Vicki Soto taught first grade at Sandy Hook Elementary. She died trying to protect her students. Her sisters and younger brother, Jillian, Carly, and Carlos, are with us now, along with her cousin, Jim Wiltzik. Good to have all of you with us this morning, and thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. You were joking a little bit, actually, before we went on the air, that this snow that just started, you think, is Vicky's way of being here, too. It is her completely. She loved this holiday. She loved Christmas. She loved the snow. And she wouldn't have it any other way than having us speak right now and having it snow and sleep all day. Hearing the Keurig machine going, brewing her cup of coffee every morning. It's just like, that's the thing that I'm just going to miss. Carly, we've heard a lot about how much she adored her students, that she called them her little angels. Uh, one mother was talking about how her child, who had had your sister as a teacher in previous years, still talked about Miss Soto. What did she love so much about these kids and her job? That they just brought a smile to her face always. She would come home with stories of what the kids did that day and how they were, you know, progressing so well and how they would just make her laugh with all of their, you know, stories from home and everything. She loved those students more than anything, and she didn't call them her students, she called them her kids, and she was so close to those kids, and she loved them so much. And Was this always what she wanted to do? This is always what she wanted to do. My aunt is um, a teacher, and from when she was younger, she wanted to follow in my aunt's footsteps, and she did. Her favorite color was green, and it's not a very common color that people love, but she loved it, so everyone in our family is wearing green scarves for her. Have you heard from uh, some of her, her, her fellow staff at the school or even some of her students' parents? Um, yes, we have, and they're very sorry for everything that we're going through. A few of her colleagues did message us and let us know that she was an amazing teacher. They were proud to know her. And they can't imagine what we're going through and how honored they were to know she'll never be forgotten. And her heroic efforts saved her students. Several of her students are able to say that they're here today because of her. And he was honoring her. But we made these green ribbons yesterday at the house. Um, Vicky's favorite color was green. Mm -hmm. And we wanted everyone to remember her. So we wanted to give out these ribbons. And um, I did give one to President Obama and he said he would put it in the Oval Office mm -hmm. with um, a picture that one of the little boys that died, um, brother made him. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was very nice. Tell me what that was like to spend time with the president. He really made us feel like she really was a hero and that everyone should know it. I'm just gonna remember going out every year the day after Thanksgiving, getting our Christmas tree and it was just painful because it's three hours just walking around a mountain trying to find the perfect tree. And any tree that me or my sisters would pick out, no. We do on stage the things that are supposed to happen off, which is a kind of integrity if you look on every exit as an entrance. 
somewhere else. The playground of the Army Public School has turned into a memorial. Posters with photographs of pupils who died in the Taliban massacre that happened. What do you want people to know about Noah? He was a six-year-old little boy. He loved running and playing with his siblings, and he loved bubble baths and fireflies, and he loved eating the inside of Oreo cookies, and he played the video Gangnam Style ad nauseum in the house, especially <laughs> the, uh, the annoying orange version of it. He loved it for some reason. He was just a bundle of energy, like he was supposed to be. I understand he used to tell his, his siblings that he, uh, that he managed a taco factory. Yes, that he was going to split his time as an adult between managing a taco factory and being an astronaut. Oh, okay. Which is an interesting juggling act, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, how, how, how are you holding up? I mean... I... Um, I, most of the time, I'm, I'm kind of numb, you know. Um, I, I think about and that I can bring some purpose to it is is by speaking out on the issue of um, gun control. The very fact that an individual close to a permit holder can gain access to these types of weapons and use them as tools of mass carnage demonstrates that such weapons have no place in our society. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. Even today, there is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control. And no official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, civilian or military, should interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to know. Our way of life is under attack. Those who make themselves our enemy are advancing around the globe. If you are awaiting a finding of clear and present danger, then I can only say that the danger has never been more clear and its presence has never been more imminent. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. I am not asking your newspapers to support an administration, but I am asking your help in the tremendous task 
of informing and alerting the American people. For I have complete confidence in the response and dedication of our citizens whenever they are fully informed. And so it is to the printing press, to the recorder of man's deeds, the keeper of his conscience, the courier of his news, that we look for strength and assistance, confident that with your help, man will be what he was born to be, free and independent. <laughs>